All right, y'all, so welcome back to another one. So we have got just an extremely nice, warm December day. It's crazy, it's December. Um, so anyway, we're gonna make some uh, some boards today. So uh, a couple years ago, I did a video on on making, uh, I made a coon board with really, really basic, simple tools. Uh, many of you guys have been asking for, for coyote boards, so we're gonna do that today. Um, you guys see here, these are the coyote boards that you all see me use. We're gonna make a few of these today. So since I've already got the video out on the simple tool board making, today we're just gonna bust out all the big tools here. I've got them, so we're gonna use those today. Um, and we're gonna make these boards with, with all the big uh, planers and table saws and everything like that. Uh, you know, that video is a couple years old. I'll leave a link below to it if you wanna check out the simple tool version. Um, if there is some interest, leave a comment down below. If you guys want me to, to kind of redo that video, obviously I've got some better equipment and different things like that. We can surely do that. But uh, for today's video, we're just gonna concentrate on, on making the boards and I'm gonna show you just kind of a production style or you know, uh, kind of easier way with all these, all these nice power tools. So we're gonna get started here today. And um, like I said, we're gonna focus on the coyote boards. So we're gonna make a split board today. Now, a lot of people, you know, these are called stretcher boards. It's kind of a duct tape terminology, but yeah, these are actually forming boards. You know, they're not stretcher boards, they're, they're forming boards. Um, now, this is my preferred method here. And then you'll see this is, a, this is a, a split wood forming board. You know, obviously there's wire and all these other things out there. Um, but yeah, I prefer the wood and I prefer the split board rather than the solid board. The reason I prefer the split board is simply for the fact, you know, with canines that are, that are being sold fur out, you know, I do still like to flip them. Uh, I, 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 I know there's a lot of people out there that will skip the flip, so to speak, and just board them fur out. I personally, I like to, I like to board them fur in, let them sit for 12 hours or so, let that, let that get good and uh, kind of dry, and then I flip them and, and board them fur out. And the, the advantage of the split board to that is, you know, after you, you put this, board, this critter on this board, you'll separate it like you can see here, and then, uh, you know, whenever you go to flip it, you know, after your time has, has passed, you simply, um, simply just remove this bottom pin here. And then this board, as the name says, it splits. So it comes together, closes up, and then it's just very easy to, to basically flip that critter. Uh, not only that, but you know, you can see here as well, uh, this board as it opens, you know, you do allow, you know, some air circulation through there too, being that it's not solid, right? So there is, you know, a couple advantages to it. Either way, I just like the split board. So that's what we're making. All right, so making these split boards today, uh, you know, they're pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So this is definitely not the exact looking board that you see off of like the Fur Harvesters board website. Um, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna tell anybody wrong. I'm just simply stating the fact. So, so this, is, this is the board that I've used for a number of years whenever I sold to NAFA, whenever I was selling a lot of coyotes. So I sold through NAFA and I used this board. Um, now, I don't want to take credit for this board, actually. Uh, I got the idea from um, a real high numbers Canadian trapper, and, uh, and this was his, his kind of deal, and, and I copied it, and I, I've ran with it. I've been very happy with it. You'll notice the biggest difference, um, and I'll leave a link below, or maybe I'll throw up a picture of the, of the fur harvester's board, but you know the, the traditional fur harvester's board is real wide uh, right here in the shoulders. You'll notice this board here kind of narrows down and, and tapers. And at least for me, my Midwestern coyotes, they look a lot better on this style of board. Um, you kind of get that little bit of, a, of a, a taper into the shoulders. It, to me, it just looks a little bit more natural. Uh, so take it, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, you can still use the numbers off of the fur harvesters or you can use my numbers either way. Um, but I just wanted to throw that out there. You know, this isn't too spec for fur harvesters. All my coon boards and everything have always been, you know, I've always followed NAFA guidelines, which no more. I do have a coyote here. This is a coyote that actually came off of this board. And you can see kind of right here in the neck and shoulders, it does have that little bit of a taper to it. Um, it's still a very nice looking dog. Uh, you know, they, they come out really, really nice. Fur harvesters also is a lot wider and it's just, I don't know, I just, 
would rather have this this style of look. I've done them both ways. You know, you still get the really nice looking bellies on them. Um, I don't know. I've sold a lot of high dollar coyotes for, for my area off of these boards, so that's what we're going with. Um, so I just thought I'd clear that up. Like I said, do whatever you want. Uh, but I just wanted to, to, to throw throw that out there. So real quick, another thing here, in case you've been under a rock, and I just wanted to throw this out there, you know, filming this in, in December of 2021, um, you know, there's still a huge lumber crisis and shortage, you know, we've got just a, a small stack here of, of one by eight white pine. Uh, you know, this was almost $90 just for this, uh, this small stack of material here. So, you know, I know a lot of y'all are maybe, um, you know, maybe in it for the cost savings and, you know, depending on where you're getting your boards and shipping and other things, it may honestly be cheaper to, uh, to just buy them outright rather than make them. So, you know, just, just throwing that in, you know, a few years ago, it was definitely cheaper to do, do it by yourself. But, uh, you know, now it's just, it's just crazy. So anyway, we went with the, the white pine, uh, you know, for my coon boards and my muskrat boards, I would ideally like to have like a basswood or a cedar or some si type of really, really soft wood. I simply just can't find it in my area. So I went with one, uh, one by eight. This is white pine. This is the clearest stuff that I could possibly find at my lumber yard. I went through the entire stack and by clear, I mean, you can see this board here. Uh, you know, I went through and I, I picked the straightest, uh, stuff, not a lot of cups twist in it. And I also chose the ones that, you know, had the least amount of knots and different things like that. You know, it sucks whenever you got to try to put a pin in a knot. So went with the clear stuff I could get, you know, um, it's just the time. So you got to do with what you can. I think that's about enough talking here. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So first things first, I'm going to take, and like I said, we're going to make our coyote boards. We're going to make them six footers. And then, uh, then I'm going to use my off all for a muskrat board. So that's going to be uh, two footers. So we're going to start off and we're going to cut these up on the, on the saw there, uh, six foot and, and two foot. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to rip down the, uh, the six footers, which would be these coyote boards. We're going to rip them down to three and a half inches. Uh, and that, that's how we're going to start off. Like I said, these are going to be my, my boards here. You guys will see these dimensions. Um, but yeah, we're going to rip them down to, to three and a half inches and, and then we'll, uh, then we'll go from there. All right, so now we got a now we got our boards kind of kind of cut up here. So we're gonna take six footers here, and like I said, this is not totally necessary, um, but you could see here, you know, where they planed it from the factory. You got some ridges and some some pretty rough edges, and I, you know, they're a little cupped and everything else. So I'm not gonna take off too much. Like I said. I prefer a little bit of a thicker uh, board anyway on a coyote, uh, you know, kind of that five eighths to three quarter range. These are, these are three quarter boards. So we're just going to just skim a little bit off the top, just kind of clean everything up, uh, run it through the finish, finish blade cycle on my, on my planer here, just clean them up and, uh, and then we'll go ahead and, and rip them. All right, so got them all run through the planer there. Uh, makes them, you know, just nice and smooth. Run them on the finished side of the planer here. Uh, all very consistent. So now I'm gonna set them up on the table saw and I'm gonna rip down, so those are one by eights, and I'm gonna rip down uh, two, three and a half inch lengths there on, on the table saw. So we'll do that real quick. All right, so in the interest of time, um, I'm rather than me just telling you a whole bunch of numbers and you guys having to you know, pause the video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just put a sheet right here, somewhere up in here, and you guys can pause it, write it down, screenshot it, do whatever you wanna do, and um, we'll just go from there. So like I said, this is, this is um, old boy out of Canada. I'm not taking credit for, 
for it, uh, but I like the way he does his boards. I've been using these boards now for, I don't know, 10 years or better now. Uh, and like I said, this was kind of back in the heyday of coyotes and, and I always did real good on them. So like I said, they are not your traditional um, fur harvesters boards, but, but I like them. So I'm gonna pass on the information all I'm doing is I've taken taken these two pieces now that I've ripped down to three and a half inches and uh, I've clamped them together so I can kind of do this all in one shot and just flip them. But I've marked down one to 20. Uh, that's, that's the measurements that I'm gonna give you guys, one to 20 inches. I've marked them down on the inside and I'm gonna go back through and just mark it, mark a hash mark, and then I'm gonna go through, connect the dots, and then take a take a jigsaw and I'm gonna cut them out. So like I said, I, I'd rather than stopping and starting and all this, I think it'd just be easier for me to do these numbers. But uh, anyway, got them clamped together. We're gonna do two at a time. We're losing daylight so fast. It's amazing here in the winter. You think you got time, but you don't. So anyway, I'm gonna get that done and, uh, and we'll make us one board here. All right, so there we go. Got all my lines drawn out. Now I'm just simply gonna go through, take a jigsaw here, and I'm going to uh, just follow along the line. And uh, I'm gonna do two in one shot, and then that way I can just flip it over. And uh, you know, it goes a little quicker that way since I've got so many to do. But get that cut out real quick. All right, so there's that. Make sure you guys can, can see them real nice. But uh, yeah, there's our, there's our coyote board for the most part there. Uh, now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and, and just round over everything. So I'm just gonna take my big router here and on the outside edges especially, you know, that's, that's kind of the important part. I just got a big round over that I'm gonna set, run down through here. And then uh, I'll take my trim router here, which is the quarter inch round over, just touch everything up, you know, make it look real nice and, uh, and appealing. And then what we're gonna do is, then we're gonna take and, uh, and address the, the bottom. You know, we've gotta, we've gotta fasten this split board here. So anyway, I'm gonna do that with the router here real quick and get that done. So got them looking pretty good there. Uh, just a, a little light sanding there uh, with a sanding block, you know, just to, just to touch up where the, uh, where the router went over. And uh, well, they look nice. It makes it nice whenever you can have everything nice and smooth. It, it just lets the fur kind of uh kind of fall in and off you know i mean it just nothing hitting it you know i get a lot of people that ask do i treat these with anything and the answer is no i i don't uh you know there's plenty of plenty of fat that comes off of off these things off the critters you know that that'll kind of seal this wood up the biggest thing uh obviously you know like like with this being at a six foot tall is just just don't let it lean up against the wall uh, they will take a pretty hard bow you know at the end of the year you know lay them flat hang them flat uh you know that's that's the biggest thing with them because if you will lean them up against the wall you know all summer uh, they'll, they'll have a tendency to to take a bow so that's the majority of our board right there um, the only final thing we have to do is just make our, our bottom, right? Make our bottom and our top. So I've got some, uh, some one by material here that I'm just gonna go ahead. This is some scrap one by. Uh, I don't wanna use my scrap off my, my muskrat. I think these are what? 
you know, these are one by sixes. So I'll take this one by material here. We don't need a real wide piece. Rip these down inch and a half, and uh, that'll make the most use of our, our lumber. Obviously, you know, with lumber prices, we're try, trying, trying to make the most use of it. So rip this down to inch and a half, and uh, we'll get three good rips out of, out of this scrap here. And then uh, that'll make our bottom. after I plug my saw in. All right, so I got some inch and a half rips here and I'm just gonna go ahead and take and I'm gonna cut those into 10 inch sections and that'll be, that'll be fine for the bottom there. So go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so we are about ready to wrap this up here. If I can find my countersink. So we're gonna take our block of wood, we're gonna place it right at the bottom. Like I said, that was 10 inches is what I made those. And that should come out about even, you know, where everything will look nice and won't, uh, won't hang over. So we'll come in on one side and uh, I'm gonna use a countersink here and we're gonna just go in. And we're gonna put a couple of, of drywall screws just to uh, just to hold that. Now we're gonna do that on both sides so that they're not wobbly, right? Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple in on each side. All right. We only need to do one side, right? Because uh, that other side is going to be our, our swivel side. So I'll, I'll flip this guy over. So I'll flip this guy over and, uh, and we'll do the same here on this side. We'll bring it, bring it right out to the edge. Now what I'm doing is I'm also opening this up and I'm, just to make it look nice. You're going to have to cant your, your bottom pieces just a little bit because, you know, as they open, it's not going to be a complete straight line so if you really care about stuff like that you can get away with one um, you know one piece at the bottom but what happens is your board goes all floppy and at the end of the year I like to staple mine up the way so that way you know they don't get all warped on you all summer just put that right there like so All right, so there's that. All right, so now you can see the boards come together real nice. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to do something for the top. Um, we need to attach it somehow to make that, that hinge point, right? So there's a million different ways you can do this. Uh, I just have some mule tape here, um, strapping, rawhide. There's just, there's just a ton of different ways. So I'm just gonna just give myself, you know, a couple inches down down each way there with this uh, this strapping here. This is just mule tape or mule rope, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, then I'm just going to take and I'm just gonna staple it in a couple good times there just with a with a stapler. And that's just gonna create a, uh, a nice hinge point there that, uh, that this board will be able to, uh, to run up against, so. Just throw a few staples there. Down through. All right, so there you go. Now you can see uh, this board, it opens up and I've made a, just a, a nice hinge point there for everything to, uh, to go off of. So that's all that's needed there. All right, so we are just all but done here with this project. The last thing we need to do is, is drill a stop for our board. Um, and, and basically, you know, 
So basically, you know, that's, that's what this, this separation is gonna create is it's gonna open up. Um, so real quick, we're gonna go ahead and throw some measurements in there. Uh, you know, coyote measurements aren't near as important as like the coon measurements, but it's still, it's still nice to know. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna throw in a measurement here and give us a line at 36 and 42. You know, and that's, that's kind of, uh, you know, if you're, if you're right there on the edge, go ahead and, uh, you know, bring him down. If not, it's no big deal really on coyotes. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and just square across and, uh, and make that line. And that'll give us a, uh, a pretty good, pretty good range. Now, you know, I have put up a lot of coyotes in my day and to get one that stretches past 42 is, that's a, big, big coyotes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side, um, just so I can have it whenever I need it. Not have to worry about flipping the thing around. So 36, 42. And what I wanna do is I kinda wanna make sure that my base, and I'm just drawing these on, I'm just squaring across with a Sharpie here. Uh, not, not, a lot, not a lot of science go into that, but uh, just squaring across. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna open this thing up and I want my, my base at the tail here, I want it at about nine inches wide. Now what I'm gonna do is, now that I've drawn my lines here, now I'm gonna drill that hole. Now I made these, these blocks 10 inches and basically that's, that's gonna be a pretty good width of your stretcher, right? That's kinda gonna be the open width. Uh, so now I'll simply just open it all the way up. Basically, you know, you can see to where where these stretchers are the same width. Now I just want to put a stop in there. I'm not worried about a whole bunch of different variations in this. I kind of want a, a pretty consistent number. So so for my stop here, um, all I'm going to do is I've got just a just a big aluminum uh, roofing nail here. You can use you know literally whatever nail pin whatever. Drill straight through this this center section of board here and then that way you you can just set your pin in there and you know whenever it butts up against the uh whenever it butts up against the the board there you know you're kind of, you're there you're home so to speak if we have it like so we just put our pin in we butt up against that and we know we're we're there so to speak so anyway that's going to be the width of your board but uh anyway before I lose all my daylight, I guess I'll end this video. But there you go, guys. That's a that's a that's the coyote boards that I use. Uh, like I said, there's a few things that are kind of a little out of the ordinary, um, but you know, all in all, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to make. So like I said, it's kind of one of those deals where right now I don't know if it's actually any cheaper to do it that way as opposed to buy them. But uh, definitely a fun little project. Uh, you know, all in all, if you're set up, you know, you can do one in an hour or so. So, I mean, you know, it's a fun little, fun little project. Uh, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, uh, I think I'll do a separate video on the muskrat boards and a uh, coon board too. So that way it won't be all one giant long video. So be looking out for those. Uh, check the links below. And uh, anyway, y'all, I'm going to get things packed up here since it's getting dark. But I appreciate you guys sticking with me on this one. I uh, hope you learned something. As always, y'all, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. We'll see y'all in the next one.